So you don't hear from women like me that often, and that's one of the reasons that I'm so grateful to be given the opportunity to speak here today. So rather than allow ourselves to get swept up in this tidal wave of hysteria about page three, let's examine what's actually going on here. Calmly, without emotion, let's put it under the spotlight. First thing, 120,000 people have signed the No More Page Three campaign. That sounds pretty impressive. Three million people by the sun every single day. Becomes less impressive then. Because what we've actually got here is a very, very vocal minority. A vocal minority of predominantly middle class women, MPs, journalists, who are using their mates to bully a three million strong, predominantly working class readership. <coughs> and those of us who do speak out against it, well, we're bad feminists. So what do we know? And it's easy to make lazy assumptions about the glamour industry, to point our finger and say that that's wrong. But the No More Page 3 campaign are doing that under two very distinct prongs. The first prong is the girls within this industry are mistreated. That's their first argument. Their second argument is that those images then go on to have a negative impact on the society that we live in. So I'm going to take those one by one and I'm going to explain to you why they're both wrong. First of all, the treatment of these girls. We're talking about a handful of models here. There are currently only 17 official page three models. Those girls range from a size eight to a size 14. None of them have breast implants. The ones who are smaller have a smaller chest. The ones who are larger have a larger chest, just like in life. Their shape and their size <coughs> is not airbrushed. Those girls are photographed by a photographer called Alison Webster. Now I can tell you, as a former high fashion model a decade ago, all about, I could spend minutes telling you about the misery and the insecurity that I endured as a high fashion model. But I was fortunate enough to be photographed by Alison a few months ago for a lingerie shoot. And I can tell you that I have never felt more comfortable, more respected and more beautiful than I did during that shoot. After the girls have finished being page three models, the Sun actually paid for them to retrain in any industry of their choosing. There are former page three models who are training in architecture, in photography, in makeup artistry. So I'm struggling here, I'm really <coughs> struggling to see where this taking advantage of these girls is happening. If they're entering the profession of their own free volition, if they're being treated well and not being told that they must be a size eight or pneumatic while they're in that industry, and then they're sponsored to retrain after they leave, where is this mistreatment occurring? Unless, of course, we judge the choices that those girls make and we say we know better. And what's feminist about that? My understanding of feminism is that we have to respect all women's choices, regardless of how little or how many clothes those choices might involve. But let's look at the second argument, the impact of those images on our wider society. Now, as a body confidence campaigner, there are plenty of things that do concern me and that do make me angry. I'm concerned, for example, about the pneumatic offerings on the pages of lads magazines and on online pornography. This very plastic idea of sexuality, that concerns me. I am offended by the despicable girl-on-girl -girl misogyny which is perpetrated by publications like the Daily Mail which scrutinise and pick apart women's bodies and encourage us to bitch about one another. I'm actively offended by that. I'm concerned about the skeletal high fashion model, some as young as 12, faking an orgasm in an image to promote a fragrance, which is then held up as being high art by an incredibly elitist industry. That concerns me. <coughs> I'm offended by pretty much every advertisement Dolce & Gabbana has ever put out. <laughs> And I'm very, very <coughs> concerned by the advertising industry generally, an industry which has a multi-billion pound budget at its disposal, specifically dedicated to the task of making an entire generation of women feel insecure, creating bogus insecurities so that we will buy things that we didn't need in the first place. Yes, I'm concerned about that. If anybody was ever going to be concerned or offended by page three, it should have been me, but I'm not. Because yes, I think that page three is cheeky in a 1950s picture postcard sort of way. But I think that the girls are healthier and happier and less pouty 
than any of the celebrities that you will see in any other publication. So I'm not, I know I'm not alone in feeling this way. Over the past five years, I've taught more than 30,000 UK teenagers body confidence, 14 to 18 year olds. I teach on average five <coughs> classes a week, and during every class, I ask them, I say, what do you think is responsible for low self-esteem in Britain in 2013? Invariably, I'm given four answers. <coughs> Fashion magazines, the internet, online pornography, social media. Not once has any of those 30,000 UK teenagers ever cited page three as a reason for their personal insecurity. So, if No More Page 3 genuinely thinks that it's serving society's needs better by taking its 120,000 strong force and using it to tackle the sun rather than to tackle high fashion advertising or online pornography or the daily fucking mail, then one of two things <laughs> is happening here. Either it's too monumental a task to tackle the genuine sexism, some of the things that you've already heard about here, the faceless porn barons, and the industries with multi-billion pound budgets. It's too much of a task. So what we'll do is we'll sign our little petition, we'll pat ourselves on the back for being such wonderful feminists and citizens, and then we'll bury our heads in the sand about the real issues that are corroding the fabric of our society. Or, the second thing, it could be the issue that I outlined right at the beginning of this speech, that this is actually about snobbery. Because the truth is, there is absolutely no scientific evidence to back up the claim that viewing nudity encourages men to be violent towards women. <coughs>